again everyone, welcome back, Bear from Bear Reads Books, thanks for coming back to my channel. And I'm here today to talk about the fabulous Miles Franklin Award, which yesterday, the 16th of July, was awarded to the fabulous book, Tara June Winch's The Yield, which I've spoken about before, a few other booktubers have spoken about it as well. It is a very deserving winner of this most prestigious prize for Australian literature. And of the six books listed in the final shortlist, I've read three and I'm trying to get my hands on the other three. And I'll have an, an image up here so you can see all six and I'll link them down below so that you can see all six. Uh, but the three that I've read, and I wanted to talk about in detail a little bit about the three books that I have read from the shortlist, because in their own way, they were all phenomenal. And uh, so I have read uh, Tara June Winch's The Yield, absolutely amazing. I've also read uh, Tony Birch's uh, The White Girl and Peggy Frew, The Islands. So they're the three books that I've read and um, the three that I haven't read. And this is my one criticism of Australian booksellers and the publishing industry in Australia in general, is that these six books are listed as the best of their kind in this country and they have, these six books have been promoted and discussed. Yes, they might be considered literary fiction and outside what would be considered popular fiction, but most importantly, most of these six books were almost impossible to find in a physical bookstore. Tara Jean Winch you could find in a physical bookstore because she's been doing the interview circuit. She's had a lot of commentary about her book. Tony Birch, maybe in certain independent bookstores you may be able to find him, maybe in some chain bookstores. The rest, very limited exposure in bookstores around the country, which meant for a lot of people that don't rely on online shopping very much, making these books accessible becomes very, very diff difficult. And that's a failing of the Australian publishing industry, that they don't promote their own books, their own fantastic books, books that are lauded as the best of the best in their industry. Uh, and they're simply difficult to find. I'm lucky enough that <clears throat> my local public library has the three books that I haven't read, but then we had this long period of uh, isolation where the library was shut down so I wasn't able to even access them now. So now the library's back up and running, it's open a couple of days a week and other days it's open as a click and collect service where you book it on, you reserve something online, you go and pick it up. So over the next few weeks I'll be reading the other three books um, if I can get my hands on them in a timely fashion. I'll be reading the next three books in the, in the short list. Uh, those three books, and you'll see them here, those three books, uh, one by one, are The Returns by Philip Salem, uh, Exploded View by Carrie Tiffany, and No One by John Hughes. And, I, and because you can't find them in bookstores, uh, the authors haven't been doing the rounds of interviews and, and publishing events, they are... I don't know anything about them. <laughs> the one that I had heard before, uh, before actually picking it up to read was The Yield, the winner, uh, Tara June Winch. So <clears throat> one by one, I wanted to speak about the three that I had read. Not take a great deal of time, not a full review, but a little bit of a recap of what the story is and my impressions. But first of all, I urge you all to watch the announcement video and uh, because it is a, uh, it was very, very well done. And I'm not sure what announcement videos are like for other prizes around the world, but for the Miles Franklin, the way they've tackled it in this period of isolation has been excellent. So it was on YouTube, and I'll link to it down below. It had interviews with each of the six authors. It had a short piece where the author read part of their work to camera and then discussed that 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 section so all in all the the announcement video for the final six and the winner was about 25 to 30 minutes long and i urge you to watch it because it includes tara june winch's speech which as an acceptance speech for a literary award is 
remarkable. It's one of it's a fantastic speech because it lays out not just what's important about this book in that uh, that we should be protecting our indigenous languages, indigenous culture, and indigenous history, and we should be not only protecting it but teaching other people about it and, and expanding it. Uh, and her speech focused on that. Uh, and it was just a, re a remarkable speech uh, with such heartfelt emotion. It was just beautiful. So I'll link to that down below as well. But first of all, Tara June Winch is The Yield. And I have spoken about this before. If you want to see other reviews about it, Six Minutes For Me, the channel Six Minutes For Me, has also done an excellent review. Uh, and you should check that out as well. And the story of the yield is just like uh, Tara Jean, which is acceptance speech. It's about the protection and recording of Aboriginal language and culture and history. Told around the story of three narratives, intertwined narratives. And the first being, the first is a creation of an Indigenous language dictionary that's being written by a man called I have to, do have to look up the names, I'm sorry, I'm terrible with names, even when I read the book. Uh, it's a, a dictionary being created by Albert Gundawindi, who's one of the main characters, who, as an old man, his life's work has been the collection of words and phrases that describe uh, or that outline this Aboriginal language, that he is one of the only ones left that knows this language. So he's creating an Aboriginal dictionary. And this dictionary in its unpublished and unfinished form is completely reprinted at the end of the book, which is, and it, and it reads just like a dictionary in alphabetical order. It's, it's remarkable. And so it tells the story of Albert's creation of this dictionary and all the challenges that that involves. And the second narrative concerns August Gundawindi, who is Poppy's or Albert's granddaughter who returns to country, returns to the country of her birth and the country of her people, uh, following the death of, of her grandfather, Albert. August has been living overseas for 10 years and returns on hearing the death of her grandfather and then discovers this uh, book, uh, this, this dictionary. Um, and, as, is in, during, and during the book is also meeting up with all of these people that she used to know more than 10 years ago before she left. Uh, so people she went to school with, white landholders, uh, um, lots of her uh, indigenous uh, cousins and, and family members. And there's this lot, it's a, it's a long drawn out narrative about uh, reconnection and connection with home and land and people. It's quite remarkable. So that's the second narrative. And then the third narrative is a very interesting one and it's, and it's a historical narrative. And the third narrative looks at, again, I need to look up the, the names. The third narrative uh, is a, and every few chapters lays out a long, continuous letter from a, a fictional character called Reverend Ferdinand Greenleaf, who is a member of the British Society of Ethnography. And he's writing from Australia back to, back to Britain about what he's finding uh, in his connections with the indigenous people. And it, uh, it outlines really how he feels about the indigenous communities that he comes to meet, their language, their culture. And it really is quite a, a singular voice, in, in, but it is a, a white voice of, of the early 20th century, so 1915 or thereabouts. So those three narratives continually intertwine and continue through the book. Uh, it is a challenging read, but it is so worthwhile, uh, especially when you when you do reach the end and you think, and you you think how rewarding this story and the messages within it are, and then you reach the dictionary at the end, the life work of Albert Gundawindi, and it's it's just uh, both heartbreaking and uplifting all at once. It's 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 quite remarkable. It is a well deserving winner of the. Miles Franklin Award, and I urge you to read the book. I urge you to have a look at the acceptance speech that Tara June Winch has uh, gave at the ceremony on the 16th. It's available on YouTube as well. Please buy and read this book. Uh, the second one 
The, the second book that I've read out of the six and that were shortlisted was by Tony Birch and it's called The White Girl. And I've spoken briefly about this one before and it tells the story of uh, a family in the 1950s and 60s uh, living in uh, an outback town of, I believe, New South Wales. Um, and it tells the story of a grandmother looking after her granddaughter, uh, who is a very fair-skinned Aboriginal girl. And her mother, uh, the, the grandmother's child, the mother of the child, has, has left and disappeared some years previously. And so the grandmother is now forced to look after the child. Now these are dangerous times for Indigenous people, especially in Western New South Wales, where all Aborigines fall under the protection of a government department or a, a bureaucrat called the Protector of Aborigines, or the, or the Aboriginal Protectorate Board, and they're tasked with uh, protecting, protecting Aboriginal people. But what this means in the mid-20th century is the removal of children at risk in their, in their hundreds and thousands right across Australia for no reason or little reason at all. And when these children were removed from their homes, they were put in state-run homes like orphanages or church homes and treated, as you can imagine, appallingly with histories of physical and mental and sexual abuse. And, um, uh, and they were sometimes put with uh, white foster families and treated also appallingly, never to have seen uh, their families ever again. And we've had royal commissions in Australia about the, about the subject of uh, child removals in this period. And these child removals continued right up until, until the eight, 1980s. It's, it's quite a, a black mark on our, on our Australian history. And the white girl tells the story of, of this the grandmother and grandchild as they navigate this world. And when a new uh, policeman comes to their small town, that threatens their security. They had a good relationship with the previous policeman. And in these outback communities, the person that would enforce this uh, Aboriginal Protectorate uh, Commission would be the local police. So they would, they would flag families as at risk or children who were at, uh, at risk, and then they would remove the children. So when a new policeman comes to the town, it puts, puts all of their safety at risk. So the grandmother aims to remove the, her child from that town, go to the capital city for a few reasons, but one of which is to look for her daughter, but also to keep her granddaughter safe. And she does that. And, it is, and, it is, and the story evolves in that way with this pursuit. It's quite remarkable, very heartfelt, and, and such a, and without it being a thriller or a mystery, it is a very edge of your seat novel. You are, you are barracking for these people to succeed in their, in their, in their flight away from, from danger. It, it's a quite a remarkable achievement and such a remarkable achievement that uh, Tony Birch himself is an Indigenous writer and it is the first time in Miles Franklin Award history where two, write, two Indigenous writers have made it to the shortlist in the same year. And Tara June Winch herself, the winner, gave a shout out to Tony Birch, the, the other Indigenous writer in the shortlist, as being deserving of the award jointly with her. Uh, it, was, it was a very touching moment. And the third one I, I have read is Peggy Frew and her book, The Islands, or is it just called Island? I'm not sure, I'll have to look it up. Yeah, the third one that I have read from the shortlist is Peggy Frew, uh, Islands. And this was really tricky to read. Uh, and probably out of the three, definitely of the three, the one that I enjoyed least, which is why I'm interested in seeing how the other three that I haven't read yet perform compared to the two that were absolutely fantastic. The story is great, but it takes so long for Peggy Frew to connect the various narrative threads that are going on in this book, to connect them together so that you feel comfortable with what you're reading and where the story is taking you. At the beginning, you have no clue what is going on or what these various threads of narrative are trying to do. 
they don't seem connected in, in any way. And I think Pe Peggy Frew's writing style is part of that problem. It's a lot of very short, sharp sentences. Uh, and you begin to feel as disjointed as the sentences and as the narrative is, as the narrative is itself. And I, maybe that's Peggy Frew's intention is to really disjoint you as the reader and to put you off as the reader. I think it's saying something about mental health. I mean, one of the main characters uh, is, it obviously suffers from a mental health condition. And as a, as a basic storyline, it tells the story of a family in crisis after their daughter, who is 15 years old, disappears. Uh, and she is never found. And if you're, if you're wanting a big reveal about what happened to her, this is not the book for you. It is not a mystery that, that in the end reveals itself. It is a family drama about how this family came to be fractured apart and how they live in a fractured apart um, world. Um, it is very disjointed and it's off-putting. And even the judges for the Miles Franklin said that, that it is so intriguing because it is disjointed and off-putting to the reader. I didn't quite find it enjoyable because it's disjointed, it put me off. And it really did take probably until almost halfway through the book to really get a sense for the characters. I'm a very, as you probably realize, I'm a very character-driven reader. I love really well fleshed out characters. And for a book like this that disjoints everything, plot, character, setting, everything, scattered everywhere to the wind, it really, I really struggled to, to find joy in this book. And it wasn't till about just before halfway where, the, where all of these different tentacles of, of narrative started to come back together where I found some sort of joy in, in reading it. Difficult book to get my head around, a difficult book to like. I think in the end I did enjoy it, and I think I'd probably still give it a high three stars, maybe touching on four stars. It's still an excellently and beautifully written book, but I just struggled with the disjointedness of it, in that it, it, for, for such a long time it just didn't make sense. It does come around, <laughs> I promise you. So they're the three that I've read, and. Now that the library's back open, I've reserved the, the other three, and as they become available, I'll grab them and read them and, and report back on them. But again, the Miles Franklin is the premier award for Australian literature, and this, this year, Tara June Winch's The Yield is a much deserving winner. And I urge you not just to read the book, but also to listen to her acceptance speech. It is one of the best speeches I've heard about the protection, the the protection and education of Australia, of Australian Indigenous culture, language and history, is a superb speech, uh, and it's it's. Uh, and I urge you all to watch it. And that's it for my wrap up of the Miles Franklin. I'm going to think I'm going to do something similar for Booker because it's later in July, the the Booker Prize will announce its long list, and then we're in Booker season. So enjoy the rest of your day, everyone, wherever you may be, and I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks. Bye.